Hi guys, I went to university in 1998 and I think around that time I installed Linux for the first time. I think it was like SUSE Linux or something like that. I simply wanted to do some networking at the time which I couldn't easily achieve, I think with Windows. And to be honest, it was a frustrating experience. I don't think I ever managed to do what I quite wanted to do, but it was interesting. And that sort of sparked interest and I always kept like, you know, one one of my machines running Linux because I couldn't be bothered to reinstall with Windows. And, you know, that's how my Linux journey sort of started. And I've made a career of it at SA. So I'm 43 now and I've been sort of advertising myself as a Linux mobile web specialist for a while. But now, yeah, Linux seems to be going through a bit of a a conundrum and I came across this video by by a guy named Brian Londuk first time I heard about him and I thought I'd just go through it with you guys because this is a bit of a reckoning in some ways I mean it confirms some of my fears and I'm feeling old because everything comes to an end doesn't it so he touts his credibilities whatever he's was an editor of Linux Journal. I can't believe people want to work for magazines at all, in, even in the last 10 years. So yeah, he correctly points out that like Richard Stallman is out, Eric Raymond and banned, whatever. Of course they're attacking Linus. I think Linus is, yeah, been quite quiet, hasn't he? <laughs> so yeah, that's not good. That's, a, that's true, I'd buy that. I'm gonna talk about IBM buys Red Hat. Yeah, I was, I keep on forgetting that Red Hat's been bought by IBM. And yeah, I think his points are that Red Hat is probably going to get killed or snuffled out inside IBM are quite true. And like SUSE, I did mention I started with SUSE. I mean, SUSE, like, I think they've been irrelevant to me for the longest time. Linux Journal, okay, who cares about that? Sorry, I wish it was easier. I wish he put chapter markers. Come on, Brian. It's 2021. This is a thing I've, I've often raised with people time and time again, um, because, you know, I'm a cyclist kind of guy who cares about, you know, keeping complexity down, who cares about trying to make an app, you know, less than a thousand lines of code or what have you. Yeah, the, the Linux, um, I mean, I've I personally done a slot counts, I'll, I'll give a link to of the web, um, which is scary. And yeah, Linux has just been, going up and up and up and um, yeah it, I I agree it's not sustainable so what do you do install OpenBSD uh, maybe <laughs> I gotta get around to doing that well I, I got free I got true NAS free NAS but I don't like the UI on top of it I'm fed up with it yeah I need I need to actually install BSD um, he makes a point that there's no there's no events, but like, come on, across the board, in 2021, be it, what is the most hip thing nowadays? JavaScript, I don't know. None, no event is happening, so, and, mo and yeah, he, he correctly points out that all these virtual events are terrible. I mean, I think I had the, uh, I, I personally pretty much only go to, the only big event I've been going to in the last few years is AWS reInvent in Las Vegas, and the, and the online one last year, it was shambolic. It was terrible. So, no, no to online virtual events, please. Don't bother doing it. Don't do webinars. Um, okay, I buy that point. This one kind of, I knew this. I knew about Fujia. I've tried it even, but I didn't get very far. I mean, early days, early days. I didn't know about this. Um, what do you call it? Transition functionality. That kind of. At that point that Brian made kind of make it made it all kind of scary and real and all the rest of it. And yeah, Fujia probably might replace Linux. And it's just it's just sad. It's like, you know, like when I first started getting into Linux, I think I joined the Debian community. There was this real community, you know, cooperative, small, you know, people coming together type movement against proprietary software against Microsoft and all that stuff. And yeah, it, look, it looks like, you know, Linux obviously bootstrap Android and Chrome OS and the rest of it, my, my own products included. 
And now, yeah, I can understand why Google would want to replace uh, Linux in some ways. But I must say, a, one counterpoint for Fajir is that it's written C++, which is probably, probably buys, it probably bodes well for, 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 for Google, because Google can only possibly hire all the, the genius programmers that, that can handle C++ complexity. So, I think I think my fears are coming true. Like it's you know the big companies, the fangs are just going to consolidate more and more power. And if and if Linux becomes waylaid and bloated, I mean, it's not going to be not going to be nice for us, is it? And yeah, he correctly points out nothing lasts forever. Uh, you know, I kind of I guess when I started messing around with Linux, I did think I would it would be last longer than twenty five years. To be honest, I so. Oh gosh, I don't, I don't want to deal with this stuff in in my, you know, like I have friends when I when I first went to university, um, I have friends that were really into Pearl, and you know they invited me to Pearl Mongers and Bath, and it was good fun, and and it was a nice little community, and um, I think I've seen like some Facebook updates from one of the main guys who was saying like you know that Pearl Pearl jobs are just non-existent anymore, you know. The, the Pearl career is over. Um, it was, I mean, I, I mean, some people would argue it was a good run, but I'm not, like, I'm feeling also kind of like, well, I didn't get, I mean, I, I, I did do some Pearl, but I never really got into, I didn't make a career of it, but I'm feeling like, I'm feeling vulnerable here because, because all this time I put it into to Linux, is it like going to be swapped out for something else and, and these, my skills won't be relevant or something like that? That's, I mean, all these, yeah, when you get to 43 or, or, or older, you'll start to have these um, paranoid, anxious thoughts, I'm sure. Especially when you get a family and all the rest of it. Um, and then he rounds up. Founders banished, community in shambles. Companies losing Linux focus, yeah, I mean, I wish companies would, I, w I wish companies like Red Hat would, was, was still around, I really, that's a real shame. Um, it's a real shame. Uh, I mean, I don't use Fedora myself, but I think they were doing actually quite a good job. And uh, I, I, I fear, I don't know. Tell me, tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me Red Hat is a spirit is alive and well within the beast of IBM. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, probably not. I guess change is on the horizon. And he correctly points out, like, you know, can Linux be saved? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, I don't know either. But I am I think it's okay to acknowledge that there is a problem, right? I think that's always the good first step. So this video, I'm sorry, it's a pointless rambling me of, of, me, my, of some FUD. <laughs> But I thought um, I thought this this video and this topic is worth talking about, worth thinking about, and do share your comments below. I would always love reading your comments, guys. Um, in all honesty, just to say, like you know, I'm actually not fearful that my skills or something will become irrelevant. You know, my experience has shown me time and time again that you know, sticking to my guns, like reducing complexity keeping things simple, you know, the elemental principles of Unix, I think they will definitely outlast my lifetime, for sure. Unfortunately, some of the projects that I've, of course, just been long, asso long associated with are um, in a bit more difficult circumstances, right? <laughs> Thanks guys for getting this far. Have a good day, have a good weekend. See ya.